my daughter um, at the age of 18 was diagnosed with a grade four brain tumour um, in February 2012. Um, so she had a persistent weekend of vomiting and had a CT of her head and they discovered a tumour um, on her brain. So she was um, helicoptered down from the central coast and had um, immediate brain surgery. Once the surgeon came back, they mentioned the word uh, radiation and chemotherapy and I knew that my daughter's journey was just beginning. So I've been looking after brain tumours for more than 30 years and over that time period, the biggest problem is that there's been very little advances made in the overall treatment for the worst sort of brain tumour. The worst sort of brain tumour is a tumour called glioblastoma. The unfortunate problem that we have is that the commonest tumour is still the most difficult tumour to look after. The, the commonest tumour is still the one that leads to the most deaths. The commonest tumour um, doesn't really have any advocates because all the potential advocates uh, ultimately pass away from that tumour. And we're left with relatives and people who are interested in brain tumour uh, management who are, um, have to basically promote the, the research goals. Um, and that differentiates it from many tumours, uh, such as, uh, for instance, prostate cancer, breast cancer, where there are many long-term survivors who go on the road and they can actually promote the research into that field. We don't have that luxury in brain tumours. SNOG is actually an old organisation. It's been around for 15 years. It was set up uh, by a group of doctors and lay people and CEOs and business people to uh, run an organisation uh, that did three things. Um, we were obviously very focused in research. We we're very focused in uh, patient support and care for the patient and the families. Um, and we focused in education. And so SNOG have clinical support people. Uh, we run information evenings. Um, there's always someone basically available at the end of the telephone uh, to take calls at any time to um, help patients or their families who are um, worried about uh, their situation. Um, and uh, yeah, I think that's an extremely important part of uh, the use of monies that are raised by um, uh, uh, fundraising activities, balls, um, afternoon teas, golf days and so on. Um, all of that money goes into research or into directly helping um, brain tumour patients and their families. Okay, once I'd recovered uh, to a reasonable extent, we started to go along to the uh, snog evenings on a Tuesday um, and they helped understand really what it was. They gave us a lot of literature. Um, they had evenings where they'd show someone to come in and talk um, and we found out that the research funding for most other cancers was significantly higher than brain cancer. To this day I can't really answer why that is. My understanding now that there is more happening and there's more awareness uh, but, but seriously, not, not enough. Um, it's kind of like the forgotten cancer, from what I can gather. We do find a lot of publicity, a lot of money goes towards other cancers very easily, and, and it's very much out there, but when it comes to brain cancer, there's not a whole lot um, that, that tends to, to be directed to them, and it takes a lot of work um, for people to to become aware of it and, and that's the reason why I'm trying to do something about it because I believe that um, it's not enough what's being done and we just need to raise the awareness. But the main thing is, is that what we suffered and what we went through others are doing too but not many people talk about it. I don't understand why brain cancer is very rarely spoken about. Uh, it is forgotten uh, and it's, it's sad. Uh, we hear so many other stories about people being ill, that the brain cancer doesn't get the same exposure that it definitely deserves. And I'm hoping that we can all get together and in, in our little way, that can become something bigger. And hopefully in a couple of years, five years, 10 years time, we can actually say we've got something. We found something that we can um, say is going towards a cure and we can uh, crack that code and that people no longer need to, to die from this terrible disease. Enough money 
that is being raised as far as research isn't going to where it should be. The Sydney Neuro Oncology Group is very much unique in the way that it raises its funds for research. The funds are directed straight towards the clinical teams who then distribute that research funding to where it's exactly needed. Targeted campaigns right to the researchers directly. And we rely on the support of our community to assist with those fundraising campaigns. And that's been one of the great uh, benefits I've seen through this SNOG unit is that we've been able to generate funds, steer it directly to research with minimal wastage and it's been done in a very efficient manner. The overall research focus is to improve treatments and patient outcomes for those suffering from glioma. Our research team performs what is known as translational research and this signifies our mission to rapidly convert critical findings from the laboratory to the clinic in order to benefit patients. We're the only group in New South Wales who has a dedicated nurse who uh, cares for uh, all the ins and outs and the intricacies of the uh, care when you've got a brain tumour. It's a, it's a life shattering event with a brain tumour and it, it, there's, a, there's many, many uh, sort of aspects that have to be addressed and having a dedicated clinical nurse specialist um, I think sets us apart from many groups in this state and that's, that's absolutely vital. So the role that I have really is where I meet a patient when they get diagnosed and meet the family and get them through the pathway, you know, or explain the pathway of the treatment plan. Um, the treatment plan for patients with high grade brain tumours is complex and it's different to other tumour strains um, and patients that usually get diagnosed with a, a glioma or a high grade brain tumour tend to need a lot of family support. It's not a type of tumour that you can do by yourself. Um, so a lot of what I do is ongoing education support, getting patients into appointments. The complex um, treatment pathway for these patients, they get seen by a neurosurgeon, they get seen by a radiation oncologist, they get seen by a, a medical oncologist for radiation, chemotherapy, and it's ongoing. They never leave our service. Um, and eventually, you know, linking into palliative care. So I see these patients from beginning to end, really, which is what I really like about what I do. As much, You know, I like to see that patients are supported throughout that journey, if you like. And then my brother was uh, diagnosed with uh, a malignant brain tumour uh, in 2006 and uh, he was in his 30s with three young children and a wife and um, yeah so I knew uh, what um, uh, what was going to happen basically and um, and being uh, aware of uh, uh, the journey of other patients and, and their families in the past didn't really help obviously with that personal experience and unfortunately he passed away and um, Obviously that personal experience really affects my ability to empathise with patients and their families and um, yeah I think that's helpful um, but uh, ultimately um, we really need to do something about uh, a disease that takes people um, in, in the prime of their life. Um, and my wish you know one day in, hopefully in the near future is that there is a 20 year old young lady sitting here as a survivor of brain cancer instead of their, their mother because um, family and friends are the only voice to this um, malignant form and until we um, raise funds so that we can research this disease then it will only be the family and friends of this lethal disease and not, you know my wish as a mother is that it will be survivors um, of brain cancer. Now we've become this lovely um, neuro-oncology team and whether you're medical oncology or radiation oncology you're actually working for the benefit of the neuro-oncology patient and I think that's something that's changed. So we've got these bunch of fantastic doctors, nurses you know that are in this and their whole um, ambition is to try and make things better for the patients that we see. I take heart from um, research in other areas of cancer, particularly um, melanoma, where we've seen a disease which was um, again a virtual death sentence um, become something that uh, is frequently quite uh, well treated and the cure rates have significantly improved. So if we persist uh, with our research then I think we can definitely um, reach a day where 
uh, we'll be able to say to patients, we have something that's effective to help you with this problem, rather than say we're going to do our best, but we have to warn you that this is uh, going to be a very uh, difficult struggle. So um, yeah, I'm just uh, proud to be involved with SNOG and uh, we um, are really committed, uh, everyone involved are committed to try and um, find a cure for this disease, but also help those who are going through that, um, that journey in the meantime. And I came down to asking just one question, how does it make you feel nursing these patients? And yes, the same thing came back all the time. It is challenging and it can be awfully sad at times also. But having committed to this specialty, we range from very junior staff to some very experienced staff. And we've found the rewards far outweigh the negatives. Speaking for all my dedicated skilled nurses, we'd like to thank you for trusting in us to care for you and your families through this most difficult time. Not only are we privileged to nurse these patients, but I also feel privileged to also work with a great group of committed, passionate people. It's a fight and it's a fight for life and it's one we won't give up on and it's one that we hope that the cure is just around the corner. So please never give up hope. The night we got home from our holiday spot, we thought we'd all sleep well. I had a seizure, fit and ambulance ride. Our future, time could tell. We were informed that I had a brain tumour. I was more concerned about our daughters. We made some calls and saw our family as we were swimming in unknown waters. My surgery was a success for all, even though my tumour was rare. I treated myself with hypnosis so that I could begin my repair. I started my trial treatments listening to all my doctor's advice, I'd always trust my instincts, this isn't gonna happen twice. Even though sometimes we're tough, I'd always think and smile. I'd change my life to live simply, to create a new lifestyle. I'm recovering my brain so well, I forget anything's happened to me. I'm back to being a mother again, so I'll continue to be tumor free. Now it's time to do something for others, as our brains are so pure, to help research brain cancer and find the perfect cure.